Uh, welcome to tonight's CPC meeting, uh, April 14th. Time's going quick. Uh, in keeping with an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, as amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2022, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by a board commission, uh, board or commission members will be remote and remote attendance shall count toward quorum. So with that, uh, this meeting may be broadcast live and recorded on ECAP. I'll take a roll call vote. So if I say your name and you are present, uh, Jim Lee. Here. Greg Strange. Here. Rory Caulfels. Present. Ed Hands. I want to say it two more times for that famous movie reference, but I shall not. Uh, Dennis Sheedy is on vacation. We wish him a very joyful and restful time. Uh, John Ventresco? Here. Amanda Varela? Here. Meredith Keach? Not here yet. Tom Broussard is present. So we shall start it off. Um, I thought I would start off, first of all, uh, actually just a little bit of a different tone, not an agenda item, and that's okay, but with uh, a spirit of appreciation. And um, it struck me this week uh, that this week there were FinCom meetings, there were planning meetings, there were select board meetings, there were all sorts of meetings, probably meetings for other committees that you all may or may not be on or town responsibilities. So I just wanted to express appreciation for all of you that did take your time this week. Uh, somebody on this call may have had approximately 24 meetings, not I, by the way, spending 17 hours uh, informing the public of copious zoning amendments, warrant articles, CPC information, all the above. But it just reminded me that you guys do so much. Uh, so not only do I thank you all for your time on this call, and that includes town folks and residents that are on this call, uh, but thank you for everything you do for our community and town overall. So in the spirit of that, uh, tonight's meeting, hopefully because we've done a lot of great work ahead, will be briefer than our normal journeys. Uh, first off, we'll start with um, the March 10th regular session minutes. Um, if hopefully you all have had a chance to review them, uh, I uh, perused them and did not find any issues. And if you all agree with that, I would take a motion to accept the March 10th, 2022 regular session. Move it. And that's Mr. Ventresco in a second. Second. Uh, Ms. Rella. So uh, we shall <clears throat> go with the roll call vote. Jim Lee. Aye. Greg Strange. Aye. Uh, Ed Hands is still not here. Tom Broussard is an aye. John Ventresco. Oh, here. Aye. And Amanda Varela? Aye. And I see Meredith has been added. She was asking to get in. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Meredith. How are you? Uh, so, Meredith, we were just voting to accept the March 10th regular session minutes. So, if you had no objections, uh, you can vote aye if you would like. <clears throat> That's an aye. I'm great at lip reading. Um, I would also uh, just recommend in looking at the March 10th executive session minutes, we did talk about two issues. One of those uh, has come to the front and center, which is good, but there is still one that is not front and center. So I would recommend that we vote simply to accept but not release the March 10th executive session minutes. If you all agree with that, I would take a motion to accept. So move, please. Second. Second. Uh, Callfells. Call so Lee and Callfells going through the roll call. Jim Lee. Aye. Greg Strange. Aye. Still no Ed Hands waiting out there. Uh, Tom Broussard is an aye. Uh, John Ventresco. Aye. Amanda Varela. Aye. And Meredith Keach is an aye as well. So, Tom, you just you skipped me on both those votes, but that's okay. I'm an I am both. Oh, did I, Rory? I'm sorry. Oh, you know why? Because my list was before you joined, Rory, so I apologize. So thank you for okay. pointing that out. I'm going to make a note. And while I may have skipped you uh, in the uh, literal sense, I would never forget you, my friend. <laughs> Way to keep it to yourself for at least the first time around, right? <laughs> Giving me a break and then, you know, appropriately calling me out in the second. 
Um, all right, so we have three, four primary items of business tonight. Three of them are for us to vote to recommend um, 555 Foundry Street, 55 and 59 Pond Street, Oak Thames Memorial Hall emergency repairs that uh, Greg and I can bring you up to speed on, certainly with Stephanie's help. Um, and then lastly, um, announcing the bid results for the uh, pickleball courts, uh, which is good news there. So um, with that, uh, jumping right into the 555 Foundry Street, uh, I believe in our last presentation or meeting, we actually went through the information, the presentation, uh, and I think we even uh, somewhat uh, quickly, not quickly, but voted to approve, but we asked if there was a final piece of information, Stephanie, that I believe we wanted to get. So could you just update us on that? So um, we needed to talk with council and Greg Strange and Tom and I all met with council. I think. Wayne may have been there as well. Um, and, and one was just to make sure that we weren't um, stepping on the anti-aid amendment, uh, which he confirmed the board wouldn't be, as long as, again, you're protecting the interest of the town in the fence, confirmed that there should be some kind of um, homeowners association, uh, a clause in there that talks about the homeowners being responsible for the care and maintenance of, of the fence and that there would be a preservation restriction placed on it. So uh, town council was fine with that. And the intrinsic value of the fence is what you're actually putting your preservation restriction on in, in, in essence purchasing. Excellent. Um... So I think we all, does anybody want to go over any of the details from last meeting or does everybody, I think we're all aligned, but I do want to give you all the opportunity. That include, um, I think it was Meredith's point about adequately insuring defense. Yes. Yeah. That, that, thank you. That was another point. It did. And then, yeah. If I could jump in, if my recollection is that uh, attorney, Tallerman didn't want any of that on the Warren article. It was just something we would handle. Correct, exactly. Just for clarity. And I, I know it's, it seems like common sense, but this fence will be insured under a special circumstance. Uh, unlike in the past, we've had a situation where the fence was insured, but not historically to this magnitude. Um, so I'm assuming the verbiage will be put into proper language. To ensure that you there's sufficient coverage to replace the in fence in kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where would that language go, Stephanie or Greg? I know it can't go on the wall. This would need article. to be an agreement between the town and the Condo Association. Problem. Condo Association and the Condo Associate, the, the insurance would need to. Um, so I, I am going to let Wayne jump in. The Condo Association would be the. Um, yeah, the Condo Association. Uh, so the organization that needs to maintain the insurance. Right. So um, I think Meredith had brought this up previously. And, and as, as Amanda just said, um, and we would rely on uh, members of this group to work with the current owner as the uh, condo documents are being drafted uh, as part of the redevelopment to ensure that the condo docs um, clearly call out the importance of the fence um, and clearly identify the requirement to maintain adequate replacement level insurance rather than just you know sort of your, your basic damages. Um, and also make it uh, clear in the deeds that this preservation restriction exists so that as the properties transfer from one owner to the next um, over the years, it's much more legible for the new owners to see and know it's there rather than something buried many, many layers down into uh, obscure condo docs. And so a lot of that would be on the, um, condo association and the owner side and make sure that that's clear in those documents. I mean, one would hope that um, 
you know, if a, if an automobile hit it, for example, that their uh, insurance would cover it. But um, in the event of an uninsured driver, um, I mean, you know, I was driving behind a Ferrari yesterday and um, kept my distance because it's a little different when you hit a Ferrari as opposed to hitting some other type of vehicle. I thought you were a little close to my Heine on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and that, but that's exactly, um, if you were, we were talking about this earlier, a um, few meetings back, that's exactly the situation that happened with the Lincoln Street School and uninsured, yeah. exactly. um, uninsured driver took down um, the fence and that, that, that end resulted in what I think it was a three year struggle with the property owner there. So, and all these conversations have been had with with uh, Mr. Lincoln, and I think once we, once we get through uh, Hell Month here, which you know, leading up to town, town meetings always a bit hectic. I, you know, we'll uh, certainly be able to make sure the documents get in, in taken care of with the homeowners association. Okay. Uh, hearing no other feedback or seeing any hands raised, I would take a motion to recommend Article 20 CPA funding for the Foundry Street Historic Fence Restoration. So move, Strange. A second. Second, Lee. That's Strange and Lee. Roll call vote. Uh, Rory Callfells. Aye. Jim Lee. Aye. Greg Strange. Strange, aye. Mr. Hands is still not here. Just could somebody check to make sure he's not waiting in the wings. Thomas Broussard, no. aye. John Ventresco. Aye. Amanda Varela. Aye. And Meredith Keach. Aye. Excellent. Unanimous. Great uh, job, next up, oh, what was that? I just said, great job, Greg. Yeah, appreciate it, Greg. Terrible driving, Meredith. <laughs> oh. um, okay, next up is an item that we have collectively referred to uh, as the island. Um, this particular uh, item is 55 and 59 Pond Street uh, regarding the conservation restriction um, that we are looking to place. This happens to relate to Article 21. Um, let me just pull up my notes. Uh, the article reads, to see if the town will vote in accordance with the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee to appropriate the sum of $350,000 from Community Preservation Fund annual revenues for the purpose of funding a conservation restriction at the at 55 Pond Street and 59 Pond Street locations listed on Assessor's Map 17U as Lot 2C and on Assessor's Map 17U as Lot 2E, respectively, and to authorize the select board to accept and or convey a permanent conservation restriction on said property pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44B and Mass General Law Chapter 184, or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, essentially, by way of explanation, this article would provide a 350 grand in funding to purchase a conservation restriction on the said properties with the property to be owned and managed by the trustees of reservations. Uh, I think we have all discussed this uh, in our executive session. We are bringing it to the forefront and center so we can make it a warrant article, as I mentioned, Article 21. But does anybody need to have or would like to have any discussion on this particular item before taking it to a vote? The, the, um, the trustees will hold the CR on this? No, the town will hold the CR. The town's purchasing the CR and okay. the trustees are purchasing the fee. Okay. Uh, just for purposes of recording, can you explain what CR is? Conservation restri restriction. Sorry. Yeah, good point. Um, and I think just probably to your point, Meredith, just in case anybody peruses this in 10 years and wants to know a little bit more detail, this is the land that abuts uh, the Governor Ames Estate. Um, it is between Pond Street and the Ames Estate. Uh, and this provides the opportunity again to be managed by uh, the trustees reservations um, and preserves that as open space that hopefully in the future will be enjoyed by all town residents and may provide an access point from Pond Street directly into Ames Estate, covering Ames Estate. So um, I for one am very excited about this. Uh, unless I see hands raised or other discussion points, I would take a motion to recommend Article 21 CPA funding for land conservation. So move, Lee. And a second. Second. That is Lee and Varela. 
Going in reverse order, uh, Meredith Teach. Aye. Amanda Varela. Aye. John Ventresco. Aye. Thomas Broussards and I. Worry Caulfels. Aye. Greg Strange. Aye. Jim Lee. Aye. That is unanimous. That is excellent. Uh, next up, and uh, Greg, I, I'm over my head when we start talking about, um, and Stephanie as well, um, about uh, structural repairs, structural integrity, uh, and all the things that go with it, buttressing certain sides, making sure we're supported. Um, but as we mentioned in a prior meeting, uh, Oaks Ames Memorial Hall has regrettably uh, been uh, forced to close its doors. The reason for that is because there was an identif identification of an emergency repair that was necessary. One of the main structural beams um, that spans uh, the main area uh, actually um, sunk, uh, causing fractures in the wall, prompting uh, engineering study and review. Uh, Greg, myself, uh, Stephanie were able to meet with uh, Mr. Fred Ames and Lynn Spencer and uh, Greg Nowak, if my memory is good, who is uh, the engineering representative from, wait Structure for it. North. Is it New England? Uh, Structures North. England? Structures North. Okay. Um, I had to find the business card. Uh, and so we had an opportunity to see it. Uh, we had an opportunity to go up into the attic, which is a journey into history. Uh, Greg, could you just add some color, I guess, probably a little bit more in terms of the detail and, and what was found for the team? Uh, sure. You know, if you look, look at the front of Oaks Ames Hall um, and up on the roof, there's a, a gable, there's a dormer gable, a little peak centered. It has the, uh, the, the uh, OA inscribed in it. And on either side of that uh, dormer, which we kind of take for granted looking at it five times a day, there are two, the corners are round. They're actually stone columns that come all the way down through the roof and sit on the exterior brick wall. A very difficult um, flashing detail, trying to flash around a, uh, a, a stone cylinder and that has been oh there's photos that has been leaking I, I would say based on the telegraphing on the brick I, I'd say it's been leaking <coughs> uh, some uh, 20 or 30 years uh, on and, on. <laughs> and so the truss there are two large trusses which are holding up actually the, the attic holding up portions of the roof and um and then some so, some also some dead loads of some some knee walls up there um, the end of this truss, which spans probably 60 or 70 feet, it's a tw the, the members of a truss, they're 12 by 12. So this is a mammoth uh, structural element. Uh, and it, it's interesting, it, it bears, it sits on the masonry wall only two or three inches. Um, could never get away with that this day and age. But so that, anyway, long story short, so that wood has been um, becoming, you know, intermittently damp and wet from the rain through the, the past decades. And uh, has rotted and just reached a point where it crushed under the compression. Uh, the engineers feel that it has sunk between four and eight inches. I, I don't think, I, and nobody really knows that. I don't think that happened all at once. I think it's probably been coming down for a while. Um, and finally reached a point, you know, they, they've, you can see Tom and I went, there's sort of uh, cracks that they've put little marks on through the years on the dormers above that marking where first it was a 16th of an inch and then two, 10 years later it was an eighth of an inch. And, and then I think Fred told us here as he came back from vacation and suddenly it was you know a half inch. Uh, so what you see on the screen, this was pulled away by the engineers. It, this didn't fail like that. Mm -hmm. And you can almost see on the, sort of on the right hand, if you're looking left to right under the plaster, you can see that, yeah, right where that cursor is, that's where it's, it's rotted out and it has just compressed down. Um, and so the proposed repair, there is a bunch of attached documents, but the, you can see, yeah, right below that red, I guess that's a red marker. Hey, Tom, oh. that's where your clown nose. Oh, Remember yeah. we couldn't find that? No. <laughs> um, and so that is the portion of the rot. And then keep in mind, that's a 12 by 12 beam. So it shows you how substantial it is. And then you can't see it in that photo, but right here to the left, this crack that seems is sort of running parallel with the beam. Um, to the left of that round, I guess that's an awl, a Stanley awl. Yeah, right there. That, um, that's a fresh crack and you can tell because it, the wood's um, 
the, the, the wood, you know, the wood uh, looks newly sanded in there, if you will. It looks fresh. So this beam not only has it com has started to compress because of the rot, um, the stresses have changed in the truss, so now it's it's starting to split. So it is certainly a uh, it's it's it is a grave situation um, and uh, needs to be taken care of. So in the repair, basically in in layman's terms, the, the repair is going to involve on this is the that's, that's the top cord uh, that we see there. This is looking down. And then this, this sits on the bottom cord, which I keep calling the beam, but it, it's really the bottom cord. Mm -hmm. And so where those two connect, uh, they're going to put in this massive inch and three quarter thick steel gusset plate. It's, 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 it's sort of trapezoidal in shape, like three feet high, three feet wide, um, angled on one side. And they're going to put them on each side and then through bolt it. And then there'll be a series of other... Um, um, vertical um, steel reinforcements that will will run up uh, to to the top beams. Yeah. So here's that here's that detail that plate I was talking about. So there's a lot of just a lot of um, detailed work in a really tight space. Um, and and then you can see on the bottom of this uh, the the steel reinforcements they're putting in are going to be larger than the existing beam. So that's why if, if you read the the description it talks about how the the finish the plaster finish of the beams on the inside are going to have to be um, changed a little bit in, enlarged redesigned if you will because we're, we're obviously going to have to hide these these bolts and steel plates that are sticking through and this is all four joints correct Greg? yeah they're going to do it on all four um because you know while you're here you might as well do it at once and there has been um there was at least i, I went back one other time more because i was just curious to get in that attic because it was fascinating but uh there's there's definitely the same situation as arising on the sister truss as well so it certainly makes sense to to do this all now and i guess it's important when we look at the numbers part of this uh, the re the re the repair of some of the plaster cracks and the repainting of the ceiling um you know big numbers but that, that would have happened um, in the work that we'll be proposing next year, but they're just doing that ahead of time. Might as well take care of it while we're there. Type of thing. So the estimated cost uh, that has been put down in terms of the application request uh, is four hundred eighty-six thousand four hundred dollars. Um, I think uh, rather than reading through the application, hopefully we've given you some graphical examples of the issue. Um, the hall is shut down and needs to shut down. The budget is comprised of uh, close to $290,000 round number for structural reinforcement, $30,000 for roof repairs, $25,000 for uh, truss plaster restoration, um, $54,000 for the three other uh, trusses because um, you get a efficiency because you're using the same mold. So if you do one truss, it costs more because you got to make the mold. If you do the other trusses, they cost less because the mold's already made. Uh, painting the ceiling, which would be the entire ceiling, would be $24,000. Um, engineering for us to get this done would be $20,000. Architectural services is $15,000. And there is a $30,000 contingency, uh, which seems to be about reasonable. I believe contingencies, if I remember prior conversations, Greg range somewhere between five and ten percent per projects. Um, yeah, so at thirty thousand dollars, it's um, probably just north of uh, six or seven percent. So it seems to make sense. Um, I would say that some uh, uh, some portion of these funds, hopefully, um, would have been spent next year, whether that's painting the ceiling, for example. Um, but certainly, this is largely a project that has come up in terms of an emergency nature. Uh, <coughs> the hall is closed uh, and has to remain closed until this is addressed. We have explored going down an insurance claim uh, process just so that the committee can understand the steps that we've taken to try to be thoughtful in terms of funding. Um, the town actually holds the insurance for this building. Uh, we did reach out to our insurance with the fact pattern uh, in the hopes that the insurance would cover it. Uh, we did hear back, unfortunately, from MIAA, hopefully I have the right initials. Um, and I always think it's like a sports, uh, like I want, I'm gonna get confused with the sports uh, organization. And um, they came back and uh, 
listed out their rationale and reasoning for why they denied it. Um, Stephanie, I do not believe that there is a currently an intent to appeal that is my understanding, correct? I'm sorry, I was taking a note, Tom. Um, oh, that's okay. Uh, so when the insurance on... was denied, correct. I believe we all correct. accepted the logic of the argument. Yes. The uh, citations that were given um, and in consultation with um, uh, the stakeholders, I guess, uh, it just wasn't, didn't make sense to go back and try to appeal. So, correct. Um, so we did try to do that. Um, and therefore, this is what brought the application before the committee. So uh, any questions that we may be able to help with or thoughts? Meredith? Uh, when the engineers were there, did, you, did they check the rest of the building? They did. Uh, so uh, as part of the process, we did ask, let me say it a different way. We were very thoughtful to ensure that of all the people that were there, Greg and I consistently asked, are we making sure we're fixing everything that's associated with this and we're fixing the root cause? And that's what generated the discussion around where the water was coming from, the solution, does that exist in other parts of the building? Ensure those are fixed. Um, that also is what led to, as Greg mentioned, it, it's literally like looking back at a wall that you grew up in that measured your height. Um, there's walls that there are multiple pencil lines drawn so that you can see, do they still connect or have they shifted? And what was the gap that was measured between them if they didn't shift this way and shifted that way? And so they did find very minor shifts. Um, to the degree that, to Greg's point, it was obvious that the beam has compressed. There's, to me, there's no question about that. It's obvious that the rot has increased and the all goes right through. But at the same point, I think, Greg, not speaking for you, but we were surprised we didn't see anything up above it that indicated everything had come down four inches um, because that, it didn't translate into any measurable way that we saw. I think, Greg, what you basically identified is that the way the load, it, there isn't as much load as one might think, and the way the load is dispersed, it may not have manifested itself with an upward shift, but that doesn't mean that the beam itself is still structurally sound. Did I do a decent job with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this has been compromised over, I think, a, a few decades, but right, it, it didn't happen all at once. I think we would have seen much more um, evidence if it's something had come down four inches at once. I think it's just been, we didn't see any roof tiles that had popped. We hadn't seen, you'd see much worse um, plaster damage. I think it's just been, I think it's one of those unique details in a building that, uh, you know, just, um, you know, luckily we caught it, we caught it before, uh, before it went any further. In fact, you can see on that drawing. Oh, sorry. Wasn't there an issue a few years ago? Um, I can't, fully remember it was prior to 2020 that there was an emergency that came across our uh, board for repairs for the building. I want to say it was something with snow maybe. Was it the turret? The the tower? There was an emergency. Yeah, it had something it to do with something. I don't know was that it was an emergency. It wasn't a structural item. It had something right. to do with the exterior envelope. It wasn't. Okay. Right. I just, right. You know, I, I think just it's actually flashbacks been a couple of, of um, all the, the structural buildings uh, that ha collapsed under the weight of the snow. Obviously, the 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 horrendous collapse in um, uh, Florida, um, and um, you know, this is a building where we have uh, hopefully will more, but large groups of people gather, and um, it sounds like um, Tom that if there are those, although it seems so um, elementary, but it's a good measure of pencil marks to make sure that there's no movement in that building. It just gives me pause, um, <coughs> safety concern. Yep, absolutely. Um, the, I think to Greg's point, I don't know if anybody has had to work with force here plaster, um, but to me, it almost felt like it had finally separated from the labs in this particular section after years of deterioration behind it. And you basically, you know, I, I think Fred did come in and see a bigger crack 
which prompted this and alerted us to what was going on behind the scenes. Do we know, I'm just curious, um, both in the engineer's report and in the insurance report that I read yesterday, it talks about how this should be shored immediately. And I know in one of our, one of our meetings with Fred, he mentioned that, you know, they were looking um, to get, uh, you know, grants and donations and, or we're hoping to have the work started, I think even by town meeting. Um, so I'm just, have you guys, have you heard anything about shoring of, of this yet? I know nothing's happened as of last week. Only of the intent they are working for and had raised some <laughs> funds. But Stephanie, do you, do you have concrete date for when that will happen by chance? I, I don't. I know Lynn was um, saying they're trying to do that as, as soon as possible. Um, but I don't have a date. I think uh, they don't know if they were waiting for some other information before starting that. We will certainly reach out. I, mm -hmm. I have an April 6th letter uh, from Lynn Spencer talking about the scope of work. It does, uh, again, the first bullet point includes shoring uh, with a tower assembly installed for the Northeast Trust end, which is the particular trust we're focused on now. Um, so that's, that, that is again, their priority. But I, I think you're right, Greg, we, we should reach out and ask Lynn and Fred for the time frame for when that will be shored up just to give us all some peace of mind. Okay. I'm actually. I'm, I'm I don't think to... I see. Did somebody sneeze? No, I, I just had a quick. Oh, comment. please, John, go for it. For the extent of the damage and the amount of work that's going to have to be taken here, I'm actually, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I can't believe that it's only $500,000. I mean, this is pretty extensive work. And with the cost of everything today, labor materials, design work, the, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised. You know, Greg does a great job, appropriately so, and I think you're referencing it, pointing out that there aren't many people that do this. In fact, as we were asking who they were thinking of, they literally said, there are three that do it. And I think it was three, right, Craig, that, that do this around here. So um, the, the talent and skill required to do these types of repairs on these older buildings, channeling my inner Greg Strange, uh, is going, going away by year by year. And luckily, they had an opening in their schedule. <laughs> because then the numbers would have been, I think, a lot bigger than you. Right. Um, now, Stephanie, I don't think we have warrant language for this. Is we it Oh, we, actually, we drafted it today, and I can share the screen. I can share oh. it on the screen for you. If you had an email problem, I heard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We were pretty much. Um, dead in the water. To say, yeah, dead in the water. We we had no technology today again. How, um, how fun was that? It yeah, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds glorious. And, and especially when it's the day before you're going on vacation and you're trying to get things done and wrapped up, it was not. Okay, now just bear with me for a minute. And as we were doing this week, of course, couldn't really refer to other uh, documents in the electronic oh, files. I believe this would be Article 22, I think. That's what I have listed as well. I have 20, you have 23 here. Yeah, okay. I mistyped that. It should be 22. All right. So I will change that. Um, and are you seeing the article or are you seeing a different screen? Oh, we're seeing the article. Okay, good. So would you like me to read it? Sure. As people read along. So article 22 to see if the town will vote in accordance with the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee to appropriate the sum of $486,400 from available community preservation funds for the purpose of emergency structural repairs at Oaks Ames Memorial Hall, located at Three Barrow Street and listed on Assessor's Map 16U as Lot 9, 
or take any other action relative thereto. And the explanation, this article would provide $486,400 in funding to repair and replace structural ceiling and roof trusses, which have rapidly deteriorated and failed unexpectedly, forcing Oak Sames Memorial Hall to close to the public. This emergency funding also will repair and restore damaged masonry and joists and repair and repaint damaged trim and ceiling plaster. Stephanie, should we be putting in there that we might have some additional funding outside? I don't think so. If they do, you mean if they do, they could apply it and it would reduce and leave open reserves that we could then um, reutilize at a future point if they don't get used. But um, unless you're, I think we leave it out and leave it like this. And then that if external funding does come along, it, it might help with either the shoring up in the immediate term or some fundamental reduction. Uh, I can tell you, uh, the amounts were not high. Yeah, I think it, I think they have committed to date thirty thousand dollars. Oh, I um, I thought there was a fifty thousand potentially another additional forty thousand. I have. I think they're applying for grants, but those that haven't been granted. Right. Yes. Right. right. You're right. <clears throat> Okay, I, I, I'm sure it might come up, so we can just obviously address that at town meeting if someone does ask from. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly in, in discussion with town meeting, this will, this typically comes up about when we're talking about the hall, um, you know, about the public supporting it, and you know, I think the fact that the that the hall has raised you know thirty thousand and is hoping to raise another ninety um, helps with the the optics of it. So, read. All right, um, if there aren't other hands raised or discussion points, I would take a motion to uh, recommend Article 22 CPA funding for the Oak Sames Memorial Hall emergency repairs. So move, Strange. A second? Second. Second, Lee. Strange and Lee. Uh, Jim Lee? Aye. Greg Strange? Aye. Rory Caulfels? Aye. Ed Hand is still not present. Tom Broussard is an aye. John Ventresco? Aye. Amanda Varela? Aye. And Meredith Keach? Aye. That is unanimous. Thank you. And um, I know, Fred, that you're here. I see you joined. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of your efforts very quickly to gather all the information necessary to support the application um, and pulling all the pieces together to help us be informed and to recommend this. Uh, and we look forward to the select board uh, hopefully seeing the merit of the case as well. And ultimately the town voters will certainly advocate on behalf as well. Well, Tom, and thank you. You've been uh, exceptional this board. I really appreciate it. It's been very good. We're trying to raise a hundred. That's our goal, raise a hundred thousand. Excellent. Well, yeah. Appreciate that. And uh, like I think Rory pointed out, that goes a long way for the residents to help understand everybody's playing a big role, even though we yeah. know you do every day. So it's right. appreciated. And please thank Lynn and the rest of the team as well. Sure. Perfect. She'll be here shortly, yeah. Awesome. Uh, we are moving on. Uh, so I think our last item on our agenda is a discussion about the bid results. Uh, you'll note that we've left the recommendation in the warrant. Uh, we have had discussions um, making sure that it was appropriate and it could be done. Um, and the reason why I say that is that the bid has come back technically lower than what we have in the warrant. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to spend what is asked, but it does mean it gives us uh, comfort that should there be an escalation of costs for some unknown reason that we can hopefully still get this much um, desired project, much benefit uh, to the community project. I learned some very interesting stats about the growth rate of pickleball, which having people on this call every time there is a pickleball field supports but I did not realize that it has grown 39%, I think it was year over year. And more importantly, I think, or interestingly, it's expected to grow 8% every single year at a minimum through 2028 at least. So uh, clearly it's a tale of increasing interest. Um, 
So with that, I guess, Stephanie, could you give us just the context of where the bid came back, how that compares to what we are still recommending the warrant article maintain? Yes. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The, um, let me just make sure I have everything right here. So the low bid came in at, um, and just, just take a little step back. So when we went back out to bid, what we did is we had the base bid be for four pickleball courts. And then the alt ads would be the additional two pickleball courts. So the um, we asked that they give us a base bid for the four and then let us know what the per court cost would be for the additional two. The low bid was Ramco stake and it came in at $319,499 for the base four courts. And their alt ads were 29,000 each. Um, the second bid was 442,200 for the base, 50,000 for the adults. And the high bidder was 565, 877 for the base bid and 400 I'm sorry forty nine thousand dollars for the ad alts. The original request was for three hundred and twenty thousand dollars and this request was for an additional two hundred and fifty three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars for a total of five hundred fifty three six fifty. Well that's great news. Um, I have already um, checked the references of the low bidder. Uh, they were great. Um, so it is likely we are going to be proceeding. I'll be continuing the uh, following through on the bid process and the procurement process over the next week. Excellent. That is good news. Any questions or thoughts for the pickleball? All right, I think we voted to already recommend this. I just, this was just informational. So just wanted to make sure. Um, I have no items not reasonably anticipated. Uh, oh, yes, Meredith. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, uh, question. Um, there, there were funds, um, Leftover uh, from Alley's Park came in under budget, uh, five thousand dollars, and um, I was asked if we could use that for um, a purchase of handicap accessibility um, additions for the park. Um, uh, Wendy um, had indicated that the funds are still there; it's a little in excess of five thousand dollars. So, is there something that needs to be done? On our end, even though those funds were specifically earmarked for Alley's Park, that we need to do so that those funds don't get absorbed into back into the budget. So, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Meredith, are you asking if the funds can be used at Alley's Park or in some other way? At Alley's Park. So what I what I don't want to happen is, you know, there's there's uh, five thousand and change that um, we we didn't use as part of uh, the first phase of the park renovation, and we wanted to <clears throat> use those uh, for continued work on handicap accessibility. It's a, it's basically a huge expense. Um, and, um, but I just didn't know if there was something specific that we needed to do because the proposal that I had given, we came in under budget basically, and <clears throat> this would be an additional work that 5,000 is just sitting in an account. Um, do I, what's the process? I haven't been through this before to say, Hey, don't put those back in the general fund. We still want that for the park. We're continuing. Oh. Work on it. I think it would probably make sense for us to take this offline and review okay. the warrant article language. Yeah, that's what we don't have authority to appropriate funds. Okay. We have authority to recommend warrant articles. 
Okay. Once those warrant articles are approved, I think in keeping with the intent of that warrant article and the spirit, Okay. We can probably review that offline with Wayne and Stephanie together, Meredith, and okay. see how um, that warrant article reads and, and make sure there's latitude that it still fulfills the wishes of the residents when they voted for it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Good question. Um, I'll make a note. And I have no items that were not reasonably anticipated um for the first time since i've joined there does not need to be an executive session so everybody uh kind of gets to leave the test a little bit early so to speak um i do want to thank uh the folks for attending dick chuck kathy uh for your continued support and engagement on behalf of uh, the issues that are important to you i also want to thank lynn you weren't present when i gave you kudos and expressed appreciation for your very quick engagement and efforts on behalf of the memorial hall and connecting with Greg and I and herding cats to get engineers to give us quotes. Um, oh. So it's appreciated. And well, I'll close. Oh. I can't say enough about this committee um, for you, Tom, to come to the hall and visit with us and look at the trust. And along with Greg um, and Fred and I was really important. And I, um, I have to say that I'm very sorry that my time in Concord, which started at seven o'clock, wasn't finished by 7.30, but um, if there's anything else you want to ask of me, here I am. <laughs> Will do. No, I think we're good. We approved it unanimously. Um, all of the effort that you all put in and the documents that we were able to share with the committee was very informative. Uh, the pictures and the illustration of the repairs were very helpful. Um, and certainly the committee expressed uh, strong um, desire for us to make sure we do the right thing and, and get the fixes correct and that we're not putting band-aids on and we're, we're getting the right structural solution that helps the next generation enjoy it for the time to come. So uh, it feels like everything's on the right path and, and we appreciate it. Thanks. But thanks very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you all so much. If I Worry, can say one thing you. before you leave. Oh, please. Yes. Okay. Speaking for myself and I thank the pickleball group. I appreciate all the efforts that you put into this. And hopefully it's coming to completion. But uh, right back at you. Amen. Thanks for hanging in there. Thank you very us. much. Yep. Thank you. And, and Tom, I want to commend you for the fast times at Ridge One High reference earlier. That was uh, <laughs> you, you are a hero in my book for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to go under the radar. No, no. Nope. Um, all right. So I hope you all have a great uh, night, um, and I will see you roughly a month. Stay well. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye, team. We need a motion to adjourn. Uh, oh, absolutely. No moved. Thank you for keeping us honest. I will. <laughs> to adjourn. You can always tell the lawyer in the group. <laughs> Occupational hazard. Right. <laughs> Good. Keep us legal. We like that. Would somebody like to make a, make a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Excellent. That is Varela Ventresco. Uh, Rory, obviously, since I missed you twice, you should probably start off again. Aye. John Ventresco. Aye. Jim Lee. Aye. Greg Strange. I don't want this night to end. I know. <laughs> it's a sad end to your 400 meetings this week. Amanda Varela. Aye. Meredith. Aye. Tom Broussard is an aye. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great week. Good night, everybody. Aye. Good night. Happy vacation, Stephanie. Thank you.